Hey everybody, I'm Peter. Welcome to Pros with Peter. Today I'm going to teach you how to force carbonate your beer after you get into your keg. First, you have to keg a beer. So, once you have a beer all fermented and ready to go, you can get it into your keg and then we can force carbonate. I use a technique to get an almost closed transfer using my spigot. This is a method um, that was shown to me on the internet and I've tried it a bunch of times and I think it's great. It goes fermenter, spigot, through the line, in to the out port, so opposite of normal, down the dip tube, because that's the one that has the dip tube. The keg fills up from the bottom and pushes the CO2 out the top, because I've purged the keg with CO2. Then the CO2 comes out the inline, the gas line, and it goes back up into the top of the fermenter and hopefully fills this with CO2. So minimal oxygen. I, for a long time, kegged with an auto siphon. Those are fine. Or a regular siphon. You don't even need an auto siphon. Whatever you need to do, get your beer from your fermenter into your keg with as little oxygen as possible. And then when you're done, purge out with CO2 by connecting the CO2 container to the gas line and just opening the PRV. You just burst open the PRV five to 10 times, whatever you feel comfortable with. It's probably not gonna be perfect, but it's probably gonna get you very close to as little oxygen as possible. So once that's done, I'll show you how we force carb. One thing to note is that if you've cold crashed your beer, which I haven't here, this will happen differently. I do recommend cold crashing and it makes carbonation go faster. The colder a liquid is, the more CO2 can, I forget the word, go into the beer, become part of the liquid. The colder the liquid, the better the CO2 dissolves into the, into the beer. So having cold crashed already, this will go even a little bit faster, but it should work just fine even at 50, 60 degrees. If you're much hotter than that, you might need to take a little bit of time for the beer to cool down in your kegerator before this will work very well. I have made a mess. Went a little overboard with the tape. Peter will do this later while we're not waiting to film. Okay, so now since you know how to use a screwdriver, you just turn this up to 40. So I like to make sure that it is settled at 40. So once I reach 40 on the pressure gauge, I just do a couple Big boy purges at 40, 40 PSI. Always sanitize earth thing. Now, oh, I bring this big heavy thing up and I lay it on my knees like this with, come, come close, come close. The gas port is on the bottom side so that it is forced up through the liquid. And I tilt my knees so that this ends real high. Well, just a bit higher. I'm not like crazy. But then we get flow from the bottom through the top. So now we're ready for a 60 second shake. But before that, I want to shout out to Homer at Oak Barrel Winecraft in Berkeley. He is the one that taught me this technique when I was first starting kegging. He is an OG, he knows exactly what he's talking about. If you're in Berkeley, go see him. He's the best, and I've been doing this technique ever since he taught it to me, and I always end up with really great carbonated beer. So thank you, Homer. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 58, 59, 60. All right, you can hear it bubbling around in there, but now I'm just going to set this back down. We are going to lower the PSI to 30 and leave it for 24 hours. That's gonna really help lock in that CO2 pressure, lock in those bubbles and stabilize it a bit. And this, in case of this beer, it's not at drinking temperature yet. So also get it down to the temperature we wanna drink it at. So now I'll do that and then we'll leave it and I'll come back and we'll turn it to serving pressure and usually after a week, it's perfect, but I always steal a pint right then, and it's usually pretty good. Hey, it's Peter from the future. It has been five days since we kegged this beer, four days since I turned down the pressure on the regulator to serving pressure. I'm gonna check the carb of this beer. It looks like it's nicely carbonated, got a good head on there. It seems really fluffy, really nice and rocky and even. I mean, it smells great, but that's not due to the carbonation. 
super well carbonated. I think it'll get better from here, but this is definitely something I'd be ready and willing to serve. Uh, I think this is a really, really good beer and I'm very impressed with it and stoked on how it turned out, part of which is due to the carbonation. Keep an eye out for the brew day of this beer. It is something fun and experimental, and if it is out already, it'll be at the end of the video. So click the link there to check out how this beer got brewed. I'm all casual, because that was so easy. I hope this brief tutorial helped you force carbonate your beers to get the perfect carbonation every time. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I love talking about this stuff. I do it all the time. I made a YouTube channel for it. So reach out to me. If you wanna see me do some brew days, click the link somewhere. I don't know where they go yet. There's gonna be a link to a cool brew day. Put it right here and click it and enjoy it. And check out Prost with Peter for more on beer and brewing. Prost. <laughs>